Go ahead, Dr. Kulikowski. Okay, thank you, Ms. Broadbent. Good evening. Welcome to the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education. Okay, thank you, Ms. Broadbent. Good evening. Welcome to the We okay, Robin? Yep, go ahead. Good evening. Welcome to the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education Open Agenda Meeting, May 10th, 2021. This meeting is being held on online and live streamed. Mrs. Saridaki, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Bauer. Here. Mrs. Boroff. Here. Mrs. Brody. Mrs. Mitchell. Mrs. Suriani. Ms. Williams. Here. Ms. Winkler. Here. Mr. Murray. Here. Dr. Kulikowski. Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Please join me in the salute to the flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We were just in executive session prior to coming in public here, and we discussed the personnel agenda, the legal status report, and the suspension and detention report. At this time, we have some additions to the agenda. This was modified after Thursday, May 6th. We have 4S, which is the administrator for 2021 Creative Summer Workshops. 16 BUS power school hosting quote and 17 BUS blackboard contract renewal. At this time, Dr. Mast would like to say a few words. Dr. Mast. Thank you, Dr. Kulikowski. T tonight, I, I have some sad news. Beth Mulvaney was a teacher at Quills Elementary School for over 20 years. She passed away last Saturday. She was a good friend, a, an amazing colleague, and a loving teacher. And she will live on in the hearts of her students and all of the people who, who have known her. Jennifer Glacken is a writer for the Scotch Plains Fanwood Times, and she is a close friend and a second daughter to Beth. She requested um, a moment of silence along with many members of the district. We will keep Beth and her family in our thoughts and our prayers. Please join me in a moment of silence for, for Beth. Now I'd like to give the board and the community an update on where we are regarding our reopening plans for this school year. As everyone knows, we are planning to reopen the elementary schools for full days starting May 17th. We are excited that the conditions here in New Jersey continue to improve. We still have to socially distance students during lunch periods and 
Each building is carefully working on creating a working schedule to accomplish this. In working with our food service com company, Pomptonian, we have learned that they are experiencing an extreme staffing shortage. In order for us to continue to move forward with our full day opening, we will only be able to provide grab and go cold lunches. I strongly encourage parents to send their child to school with a delicious homemade lunch, if at all possible. Crafting these plans now has double benefit as it's helping us prepare for the full opening in September. Currently, the middle school principals are discerning the possibility to bring students back full time before the end of the school year. The challenge remains the same as in our elementary schools, but on a much larger scale, given the population of over 800 students. Maximizing the safe return of our students now ensures a successful full return for all of our students in September. I know that there are community members that have highlighted and asked about other districts in the state that are open full days and have raised questions, why can't we? Please understand that the conditions in each district are different. For example, in a nearby district that is open for full days, only 30% of their student population has returned to in-person instruction. Here in Scotch Plains, we have 80% of our students back in their classrooms. At the high school, while they haven't come in for full days or had lunch, due to the block schedule that was implemented this year, there's only an eight minute difference in each class period. Students are dismissed to have lunch at home. There are 10 minute breaks in between blocks so students can go outside and have a snack and, a, and water if, if they so desire. So the high school, though it isn't a, a full day, it is very close to a full instructional day. Our deliberate methodical and safety focus approach to reopening schools has helped us to continue to maximize the return of students to our buildings. We are so happy that many of our end of the year traditions and rites of passage like the prom and graduation, theater productions, marching band show, moving up ceremonies and class trips will be in place, albeit modified to tend to the ongoing need to socially distance. We have every reason to look forward to a strong full opening in September. On a different topic, I want to acknowledge that I am aware that there has been a social media discussion regarding race and our schools. I want to be clear that the Scotch Plains Family Schools are no place where we will tolerate anyone to sow the seeds of hatred. At the same time, I understand that people have had painful experiences while attending our schools. The board and I and the entire school community are focused on working with our community to make our schools a place where every child always feels safe and welcome. We are doing intentional work in diversifying our hiring in reviewing our curriculum, in amplifying student voices, and partnering with community members to make sure our schools serve all. One way the board has shown their commitment to this work is that the board has created a new committee for wellness and equity this year. This committee has created a task force that brings representatives from our schools, our community to come together as an opportunity to listen to each other and make actionable plans together. If you are interested in knowing more about this work, please call my office and I would be happy to talk about it with you further. Thank you, Dr. Kulikowski. Let's continue with tonight's meeting. Thank you, Dr. Mast. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure that the right of the public to have advanced notice of and to attend meetings in public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices located at 512 Cedar Street, Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Such notice was also provided in a written notice and forwarded to the Times, the Star-Ledger, 
the township clerk of Scotch Plains, and the borough clerk of Fanwood in the annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings as adopted March 26, 2020. At this time, we'll have our instructional update, which is the recognition of school nurses. So Dr. Dr. Pilikeski and all our nurses have always been essential in keeping our schools healthy for teaching and learning. This year with COVID-19, our nurses have been available to support their buildings in so much, including contact tracing and in sharing safety protocols to, to, keep, to keep the schools open as safely as possible. Their dedication and commitment has been a source of strength for our entire SPF community. And now each principal is going to say a few words about their specific nurse. So starting with Brunner. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Thank you, Dr. K. Um, the, the nurse at Brunner is a, is a gift. Uh, her name is Melissa Payne. Um, when I was thinking about a few words to say about Melissa, uh, I, I just thought about you know nursing as a profession, and I, I think the thing that's most beautiful about nursing as a profession is that at its fundamental core, it's a profession of caring, and Melissa shows that care in everything she does. It's like her essence, and I know there's a famous textbook for nurses that's literally called The Essence of Care, and Melissa really exemplifies that. She cares in her conversations with kids. She cares when she's putting Band-Aids on their boo-boos, even the ones we can't see. She cares when she's uh, talking with parents. She cares when she's helping teachers. And that care this year was like on display literally 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Wow. Melissa and I spent many weekends together uh, during the, the, the darker days of, of the school year when our numbers were not as good as they are right now. And it wasn't uncommon for us to spend, you know, Saturday and Sunday on the phone working through different cases and scenarios. And even through all that, her care is what came across the most. Melissa is really um, a wonderful, wonderful asset to our school community. And, you know, again, a gift uh, certainly to the kids, the parents and the staff, and, and without a doubt to me. Thank you, Mr. Bortnick. I don't see Melissa here. She cares so much about her family <laughs> that, she, <laughs> that she couldn't join us tonight. She has three beautiful little girls who are very active in sports and she wasn't able to attend. And I said, well, I'm still going to go and brag on you because the community deserves to hear how great of a job you're doing and how much you matter to Brunner. So thank you all for indulging that, even though Melissa wasn't here. No, thank you for doing that. And please, you know, take our word back to her that we missed her and we are happy that she is with her family right now, but we wish she could have been here too. So sure. thank her for us. Will do. Dr. Weatherall. Thank you, good evening. So Chris Cappadocia is the school nurse at Kohl's. Um, Chris's hours are 820 to 320, Monday through Friday. And that might be the funniest thing I have ever said. Ms. Cappadocia works round the clock and she's available to me any time of the day, any day of the week. Unfortunately, like Scott just said, I've had her call her too many times after school hours, most often on Sunday afternoons, and she has never once screened my number. In addition to taking care of the students at school, she conducts screening, she monitors health, maintains records, trains staff, manages emergency situations. She's had all those additional COVID responsibilities. And somehow she has managed to keep up with the never ending paperwork, the emails, the phone call demands, while still smiling and staying positive. Ms. Cappadocia can quickly assess students and either provide them with needed medical care or gets them back to class very quickly. She makes students and staff feel at home in her office. She's genuinely interested in the lives of both. She's a friend to all and her office is the heart of the school. Ms. Cappadocia brings sunshine with her wherever she goes and makes working at a school a little brighter and a heck of a lot more fun. I thank Ms. Cappadocia for her being her whimsical self all the time and thank her for all that she does during school and well after school hours. Cole School really appreciates everything that she does. Thank you, Dr. Weatherall. I don't see Chris here either. 
Thanks. No, I'm sure she's resting up waiting for the phone to ring for the next time that I have to call her late at night. Uh, well, please also extend to her. We, we were sorry she couldn't be with us, but we are so proud of her and thank her for being our school nurse at Coles. Absolutely. Thank you. Mrs. Halbert. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here to share my gratitude to all our school nurses who have gone above and beyond this year as they've dealt with unprecedented issues of health and safety. It is a true honor to be able to say a few words about Evergreen's school nurse, Darlene Tomasulo. Earlier this year, Mrs. Tomasulo was awarded the Governor's Educational Professional of the Year Award for 2020 to 2021. Her nomination came from a nursing colleague who noted that this year was the year of the nurse and it was fitting that Darlene's efforts as a district lead nurse should be recognized, acknowledged and honored. I totally agree with these sentiments. I've had the privilege to work with Mrs. Tomasulo every day for the past 11 years. And in that time, I've been impressed with the depth and breadth of her medical knowledge, her ability to connect and develop a wonderful rapport with our students and their families, her strong work ethic, and most importantly, her unfailing sense of humor. Our staff has recognized these characteristics as well and frequently seek out her advice and guidance. In addition to all of her nursing responsibilities, she's coordinated our INRS team these many years and has demonstrated leadership, compassion, and creativity in our efforts. This year, Darlene's work as the lead nurse has been superior. I don't know if she gets any sleep because it seems every moment she is responding to a new situation and doing it with patience and grace. Darlene speaks the truth calmly and thoughtfully even when she knows it may not be what you want to hear. Keeping up with all the latest guidelines is daunting. And yet if you need to know something, she has the information at her fingertips or knows exactly where to find it. She collaborates so well with all the other amazing district nurses as they develop new, the new letters, the new protocols that are required in this ever evolving pandemic. Darlene, I have always been impressed by you, but this year I am in awe and deeply grateful that you are our school nurse. I know that everyone in Evergreen feels the same way. I found a quote about nurses on a nursing blog that seems to fit you perfectly. Nurse, just another word to describe a person strong enough to tolerate everything and soft enough to understand everyone. Thank you so much, Darlene, for guiding us with wisdom every year, but uh, more importantly this year when we have all really needed that guiding hand and you are always, always there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Very nice, Mrs. Hobart. Congratulations, Ms. Chamasula. I'm so glad you could be here tonight. Dr. Slocum. Thank you, Dr. Mast, and thank you, Dr. Kulikowski and the Board of Ed for doing a night like tonight. Boy, do we need to celebrate our nurses. Uh, to summarize Mrs. Cheryl Ward and who she is to McGinn School in a few minutes in any year is not possible, but this year it won't even scratch the surface. In just the past week during Nurses Appreciation Week, Mrs. Ward has Screen students, written letters to families about allergies, planned field day, covered classes, helped students navigate their meltdowns, isolated students with COVID symptoms, checked daily screenings, calm staff members as procedures for the five full day return sink in, helped pass out lunches, sat with students at lunchtime, called families regarding their screenings, participated in INRS meetings, written dozens of emails to families about how long to quarantine following illnesses and trips, visited classrooms to check in on children needing some extra TLC, and many, many other things that are too numerous to list here. Mrs. Ward has been an advocate this year for our staff and our students. She has researched and educated us on the CDC guidelines and helped us understand the implications of every decision from measuring space between students to directionality of desk shields. Every decision regarding safety and well being, she has been a part of. And well being has been at the center of her work, as many of my colleagues have mentioned before. 
She has single-handedly buoyed spirits throughout this year by leaving a piece of chocolate or a kind note in a staff member's mailbox just when we need it most. This year has asked more of our nurses than ever before, and they have stepped up. Mrs. Ward has met in the evenings, as, as again, my colleagues have mentioned, in the early mornings and many weekends, many times this year to share news about COVID exposure, to write letters, to speak with staff members and families until they feel all of their questions about this new and frightening virus have been answered. It has been evident in all that Mrs. Ward has done that it is because of how much she cares for everyone in our community and how strongly she feels we are all in this together and this is why she chose her profession. On top of spending numerous hours beyond her work day for our community, Mrs. Ward also donated her time to vaccinate healthcare professionals at, at the Kane University facility. Cheryl, you are a superhero. I know we all see the signs all over, but they really are true that we could not have made it this far this year without our nurses and McGinn would not have made it without Mrs. Ward. Thank you, Cheryl. Very nice, Dr. Slocum. And Cheryl, I'm so glad you were here to hear the kind words from Dr. Slocum. We all think that you're so, all of you are so wonderful. And the fact that you were volunteering to give immunizations on top of everything else, it's amazing. Thank you. Mr. Fury. Thank you very much. Uh, it's so nice to be here tonight. Uh, before I start off, Mrs. Meyer, would you mind just saying hello to everyone so everyone can, can see you? Hi, everyone. <laughs> So you could hear that kind, sweet voice and see that big smile. Uh, that smile is in just, it's just infectious. It's, it's everywhere. We see it every day um, in every situation. As my colleagues mentioned, uh, this year has been, been like no other for our nurses and all that we've asked them to do, um, Mrs. Meyer has, has truly stepped up in, in every way possible. Um, it's just amazing that every time we have any situation at school one, uh, she's encountering that situation with the big smile that she has on her face right now. And if you've noticed, she's had that same smile on her face this entire evening. Um, she is just a breath of fresh air for all of us. Um, she's a ray of sunshine that just makes each and every day that much more wonderful at school one. Um, she's had some amazing highlights this year, just all the work that she's done to keep communicate regularly with all the other nurses and keep, keep me and the rest of the staff uh, aware of any changes that have been taking place. As my colleagues have mentioned, we've also spent many uh, weekend and late night phone calls together, uh, reading over emails that we received from parents, uh, talking about possible exposures and all the different situations that have, have occurred. Um, the, the many times that she's had to communicate with a teacher to explain why a student may need to go virtual, um, all the while keeping everything that she needs to confidential uh, for the families involved. Uh, one of the most important and most amazing highlights from Ms. Meyer this year is the work that she's done um, for our staff. She has been someone that has uh, really focused on keeping the spirits of our staff high. Um, she organized a number of special days for, and events for the teachers in an effort keep, to keep them smiling. Uh, from walking around the building delivering hot chocolate in the winter to a snack cart or a pretzel cart on National Pretzel Day, which uh, I didn't, don't even know if National Pretzel Day is a real thing, but it was certainly well, well received by our staff. Um, you always thought of ways to keep everyone happy and you're constantly putting the feelings and thoughts of others first. Uh, we're so fortunate to have you as the nurse at school one, whether it's with your interactions with students, with parents, with staff, um, you make our school a better place. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fury. He's giddy with goodness. Congratulations, Ms. Meyer. Thank you for coming tonight to hear the, that the attributes to yourself. I'm so proud of you and all our nurses. Dr. Dumaresk. Uh, thank you for uh, having this night. It's wonderful. I also want to give a, a special thank you to Darlene Tomasulo, our district nurse. Before I do recognize our park nurses, she's incredible. We couldn't do any of this work without her. And I, I too have bothered her on many nights and weekends. So thank you, uh, Mrs. Tomasulo. So I would like to recognize um, two of our park nurses. First, uh, Mrs. Janet Coyle. Uh, Ms. Coyle, if you could just say hello and mute yourself so everybody can see you. I'm, I'm on the spot. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> and then Mrs. Deniger, Mrs. Kristen Deniger, if you could just unmute yourself. Hello. 
These are our two incredible park nurses, and I won't go into the myriad things that they do for um, all of our COVID protocols, uh, because all of those things are the same, but I will share two very quick stories of how they managed to keep kids first at park. Uh, so I remember specifically um, Mrs. Coyle, who has just joined us and only has been here for a couple months, um, and good for her for wanting to become a school nurse in a pandemic. So thank you, Mrs. Coyle, for joining us. Um, we were discussing a very intense discussion in the park nurse's office uh, a few weeks ago when one of our eighth graders walked in and said she she got hit in the head with a frisbee. Um, so you know she was she was okay, uh, but you know how sometimes mm -hmm. students like to come to the nurse's office just to visit. And as we were right in the middle of this very intense discussion about, of course, COVID protocols, uh, Mrs. Coyle did a really quick concussion protocol on her as we were still having a discussion about COVID um, and managed to. To, you know, get her an ice pack, make her feel good, send her right back to class. Again, all right in the midst of everything. So thank you, Mrs. Coyle, for always putting our kids first. And very similarly, this just happened today. Mrs. Dinegar and I were having a conversation in the hallway, you guessed it, about COVID protocols. And she noticed one of our students walking towards us. And as she was having a discussion with me, she looked down, looked back up at me, looked at him and said, are your two shoes on the wrong feet? And they absolutely were. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how she recognized that. I don't know how anyone else would, but we have two incredible school nurses who keep kids first and manage all these impossible things during impossible times. And I'm just so thankful um, of their service and to have them with us. So thank you and congratulations for being here and being a part of our, part of our community. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mrs. Coyle and Ms. Dinegar. Uh, is, is Dr. Holloway here? I don't see him. Okay, we're, we're going to find him and we're going to go to um, Dr. Heise. Hi, thank, thank you, Dr. Mast. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so I have the pleasure to recognize Lisa McNally, uh, Marcia McCarthy, and Mackie McCardle. Um, Mackie uh, is, is uh, uh, stationed at the high school, but she uh, will sometimes move to uh, a different building should 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 the need arise. Um, so, I mean, you know, thus far, every, everything that's said about each each of the nurses uh, applies to, um, to to the three nurses at the high school, and and vice versa. What I'm about to say. Um, applies to everyone, and um, I, can, I, I can attest to the fact that the nurse's office at the high school um, is a revolving door, um, busy and high energy environment under normal circumstances. Going to the high school nurse's office on a typical day without COVID-19, and it is a fast-paced environment. Um, no time for no time for relaxation. Add to that the COVID-19 pandemic and all of its complexities associated with determining close contacts, determining quarantining for not only students, but also staff and the many other issues associated with what we are currently facing. And it has made their job even, even more stressful. I mean, I can honestly say that the, the high school nurses have yet to come up for air this year. And I think all the nurses can probably attest to that. It's just um, feels like we're just trying to keep the boat afloat, if you will, uh, each each and every day. Um, I can say that I you know, greatly appreciate all that the three nurses at the high school have done for our students and 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 for our staff. Um, tough the tough decisions and conversations um, are had every day. Um, I mean, they're caring, they're compassionate, uh, they're cool under fire, and they will face any challenge that's presented to them. So again, it's my pleasure to recognize Lisa McNally, Mackie McCarl, Marsha McCarthy. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you, Dr. Heising. So now we're going to go to Mrs. Rabimbis, who supervises the nurses, and she's going to speak on behalf of the Terrell nurses. Dr. Holloway must have had an emergency. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Dr. Mast. 
Um, I'd like to recognize Mrs. Lambeau and Mrs. Pope. Um, Mrs. Pope is un unfortunately not with us, um, but I can say that both of them are, just like everyone has mentioned of, of our other school nurses, the, the kindest, warmest people that you can encounter. When you go into the school nurse's office at Terrell, you're always greeted with a smile and they're always focused on students. And my, my favorite story of Mrs. Lambeau, um, a, a couple of years ago, there was a student who um, had just been diagnosed with diabetes and the student needed to, to, to check their blood sugar level and report their blood sugar level and be able to figure out what dosage of medicine the, the student needed. And Mrs. Lambeau was caring for two other students on the side and the student reported his the, the numbers to her and she, she quickly responded. The student took care of himself, responded to her and, and, and went back to, to class. She took care of the other students and the two of us were alone. And I said, how did the student know how to do that? And, and, and she was so sweet. She goes, I trained them. <laughs> and, and just that's, that's Karen. She's, she's a kind, warm person, always available to anyone, whether it's our students, um, our parents and our teachers. And, and I thank you, Karen. And, and please let Janaea know how much we appreciate her and all of the time and dedication that both of you have given the Terrell Middle School community. Thank you. And, and Mrs. Rubimbus, can you make a, a closing comment before Dr. Kulikowski moves us on to um, the next part? Surely, as, as the supervisor of the, the school nurses, it's been an incredible year. And I can say, um, I, I always knew as a school principal that the school nurse was, was by far um, one of the most important people that, that worked with me. Um, but I will say this year, the school nurses are, are a major force in our school community in keeping us healthy and safe. Um, you know, on a typical day, they do those things that make children feel better. They give them a healthy snack, rejoice with the treasure of a lost tooth and give them a safe place to rest when they don't feel well. Um, they provide students with a calm, supportive environment that eases their nervousness when they deal with these complex medical issues. Their support extends to parents and staff um, at each and every school. This year, they have been most important, the most important school-based medical resource during the COVID-19 pandemic. They've researched the virus, participated in a vast number of training sessions, and kept up to date on the evolution of the virus, CDC guidelines, and the Department of Health guidelines. Most importantly, their voices have led our school community in maintaining a healthy and safe environment in which all of us can learn and work. I am grateful for their dedication, their tenacity, and their collaborative spirit, and always keeping me on my toes to make sure that I am up to date in everything that needs to get done and communicated um, to our school community. I also want to extend a, a very warm thank you to Mrs. Tomasulo. Um, this was the first year that we had a lead nurse and I will tell you, Mrs. Tomasulo is, is by far the most gracious person um, I've ever encountered. She can handle any one of us in any kind of stressful situation, whether it's answering quick questions um, about the pandemic, on whether a, a, a snack should be held inside or outside um, and giving guidance and answering all the questions that any of the nurses have, any of the administrators have and being on those Friday phone calls with Dr. Mast um, with the Department of Health. Um, the, the community has heard her at our board meetings really um, share the, 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 the information in such a clear and coherent way. I know that you've made um, our school community safe and healthy, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful for all of your time and dedication. Um, it's, it's very much appreciated. Thank you all of you for all that you do as well. Um, it's, it's definitely a joy to work with all of you. Thank you, Mrs. Rabimbus, and thank you for all coming out tonight. So let's make this official. Can I have a motion for the resolution for National School Nurse Day? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Do we have a second? 
Second, Williams. This is Williams, thank you. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Winkler, you have the honor. Yeah, I move that the board adopt the following resolution in support of National School Nurse Day. Whereas students are the future and by investing in them today, we are ensuring our world for tomorrow. And whereas families deserve to feel confident that their children will be cared for when they are at school. And whereas all students have a right to have their physical and mental health needs safely met while in the school setting. And whereas students today face more complex and life-threatening health problems requiring care in school. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has emphasized the essential role school nurses play in student health and academic success. And whereas school nurses act as liaisons to the school community, families, and healthcare providers on behalf of children's health by promoting wellness and improving health outcomes for our children. And whereas school nurses serve a, a critical role in improving public health and are in a position to make a positive difference for children every day, Therefore, be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education does hereby proclaim May 12th, 2021 as National School Nurse Day and acknowledges, celebrates, and recognizes the efforts and accomplishments of our school nurses who meet the needs of today's students and contribute to our community by helping students stay healthy in school and ready to learn. So, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Winker. Congratulations, and we're so proud of all of our school nurses. And thank you for taking time to come out tonight, as well as all our principals who took the time to come out tonight. And thank you, Mrs. Rabimbis, as supervisor of the school nurses. Okay, everybody is welcome to continue along with this Board of Education meeting, but if you have other things to do, we don't mind if you step out. So we're going to move on to our public comment unless anybody has anything else to say, questions or comments for our school nurses or principals. I just want to say thank you to everyone. This was a very nice night and I appreciate all the kind words. Well, thank you again, Ms. Ward for coming out and we are so proud of you and all of our nurses. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McArdle, hi, bye. <laughs> bye, and thank you very much. Oh, thank you. If anybody else wants to say anything, just unmute yourself and go right ahead. And we'll move on to the public comment. If you would like to make a public comment, please go to spfk12.org for your Zoom login information. In accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public School Bylaw 0164-0165, we will open the meeting for 15 minutes for public comments. Maximum three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. And if time remains, speakers may address other matters. If you would like to make a public comment, please go to spfk12.org for the Zoom login information. And when it's your turn, please unmute yourself, state your full name and the town in which you reside. Please note, board members cannot respond regarding concerns of individual students or staff members and such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. So Ms. Broadbent, do we have someone ready to make a public comment? Yes, Dr. Kulikowski, John Denning. Mr. Denning, please unmute yourself. State your name and the town in which you reside. Uh, John Denning from Scotch Plains. Thank you. Hey, thank you. First, I have to agree that our, our nurses are absolutely great. Uh, they've been really great for my kids, and I appreciate them uh, tremendously. Uh, my comment for tonight is that the district serves students of faiths from around the world, including those who practice no religion at all. 
The district's mindfulness program has not fully considered students' religious freedoms. One need only look at the wellness family Palooza where Mind Break Yoga advertises that it teaches you how to refresh your mind, body, soul, and spirit. The soul and spirit are not the domain of the public school district. The infringement takes place on two levels. The first is appropriation, where the religious beliefs and practices of one religion are co-opted and trivialized into classroom activities. The second is when students are made to participate in these appropriated religious activities contrary to their own faith. Children have been instructed to participate in activities from other religions, including assuming positions of worship, meditation, yoga, and reciting mantras. Our own children have been spoken to rudely by teachers when they declined to participate. One teacher went so far as to establish a Zen zone in their classroom, creating an exclusive religious space. It took six weeks of addressing the issue with the principal, the teacher, and the superintendent to get it removed. Multiple written requests for future protections against such exclusive spaces went unanswered. We were so concerned that we brought these activities to the attention of our child's principal who agreed that mindfulness activities could infringe on religious beliefs and even provide a specific example of how this could happen. They were gracious in working with us to put protections in place for our child. Still concerned, we conducted an open public records request to review the curriculum and we were informed there is no mindfulness curriculum. We requested any guidance documents and were informed there are no guidance documents. The district must make parents aware of what takes place in the classroom and put the appropriate safeguards in place to prevent teachers from imposing their own brands of spirituality on the students. The pro program of mindfulness is extracurricular and should be treated as such. The program should be completely optional with parents required to opt their children in rather than out. Our children will not participate in any mindfulness activities their souls and spirits are off limits to the district. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Denning. Ms. Broadbent, do we have another comment? We do. Joyce Walling. Hi, Ms. Walling, please unmute yourself. State your name and the town in which you reside. Huh? Hi, my name is Joyce Walling. I'm calling from Scotch Plains. Thank you. Good evening. I'm calling with two questions with the elementary schools returning to full day next week. I'm just wondering why the pre-K will not return to quote unquote full day and leave at 1120 instead of 1105. And second, Dr. Mass, I know the middle, the middle school and the high school will remain half days for the rest of this school year but return to full day in person next school year. What do you see as being different in September to allow the middle school and high school to return to full time then instead of now? Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Walling. I think Dr. Mass mentioned in her words at the very beginning of the meeting that there are some difficulties with the food service staff um, at this time, not with the food, but with having people there in order to prepare and serve. So there will be meals available for grab and go, just not to eat indoors. And that is why we're sending people home for lunch. Aside from not having space enough to have everyone socially distanced during the meal period. Dr. Kolakowski, uh, that that's um that that's true. Part part of the, part of the challenge is just that the middle schools are so much bigger than than the elementary schools to state the obvious, um, you know. And we we've been doing this incrementally. So, you know, we're we're opening the elementary schools on the seventeenth. I I will get the specific answer regarding pre K. Um, please call my office, um, you know, tomorrow afternoon if if you would, and I I could speak to that. Um, in, in more detail, um, for part of, part of the challenge is is just the spacing for meals. Even though you know the the conditions are getting much better, um, you know, there was a great article in the New York Times that talked about exponential growth in the way that the the virus spread, and now we're experiencing exponential decay where it's really dropping very rapidly, and we've been, we've been watching that. We we knew that. 
it was trending in that direction and we've responded accordingly. As we look to see if we can um, consider opening the middle schools, part of it is what Dr. Kulikowski said and what I mentioned in the, the beginning of the year. It's not only how can we find the space within the middle schools to, to do the lunch because we still have to um, approach the social distance of six feet. Um, now we have an added challenge where the, the food service, just like I've heard and read about many restaurants, are having trouble finding staff to do that work at this time. Um, in September, there will be some conditions around unemployment, et cetera, where, where people will be returning to work and and that will um, that will remove that obstacle. But we're, 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 we're still looking as we know the conditions and we're, and we're hoping that the conditions will continue to get better to, to see if we'll be able to have a trial run um, at, at all levels. So, so that remains to be seen, but we do know that we will be doing it um, on the 17th at the elementary. So that's, that's why. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Uh, Ms. Broadbent, do we have another uh, public comment? Uh, no, Dr. Kulikowski, there are no hands raised. Okay, then I'll close this portion of the meeting and move on to the committee reports. Does anybody have a committee report this evening? Mr. Murray. Thank you, Dr. Kulikowski. I have a uh, facilities committee report. We met on May 3rd. Um, there was two items on the agenda. One was a request for approval for a boiler replacement at the high school. Um, but at this point in time, the committee was requesting additional information um, for more of a district-wide inventory regarding the full needs of the district, um, both in the mechanical space, as well as um, any of the other um, needed, needed um, areas on the facility side. So we've tabled that one until we get additional information. And then the second was uh, our director of operations provided a risk assessment regarding the tent proposal um, she identified multiple areas that were unfavorable for purchasing tents across the district. So at this time, um, the committee felt that it was not in their best interest to proceed with the tent purchase due to the expense. Um, but some of the other items re 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 that were noted included security, setup, removal, storage, and some other um, safety factors. And that concludes my facilities report. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Any questions for Mr. Murray about the facilities report? Thank you, Mr. Murray. Are there any other reports to be heard this evening? Seeing none, then I'll close this portion of the meeting and move on to letters to the board. Uh, one email was uh, received by the board and it was addressed by the proper administrator. Next, we'll have the superintendent's report, Dr. Mast. Thank you. So for 1S, I would like to make the motion for the board to approve the, the listed private and public uh, extended school year placements. I have a motion. So moved. Second, Boroff. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Thank you, Mrs. Boroff. Any question or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. And for the next board meeting, I will be asking the board to approve the school nursing plan, um, the matrix of forms, and the administrator for the creative summer workshop. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mast. And moving on to the personnel agenda, I'm asking the board to approve the superintendent's recommendation that we discussed in exec this evening. Do I have a motion? So moved. 
Thank you, Mr. Murray. Is there a second? Second, Winkler. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any questions or discussion regarding the personnel agenda? Seeing none, Mrs. Saradaki, will you please call the roll? Mr. Wink, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Murray? Yes. Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. Mrs. Boroff? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Mitchell's been here since 8.33. Oh, okay. Mrs. Mitchell? I'll say yes, I wasn't an exec, but I read it prior. So yes, based on what I've read. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Mast. That brings us to the business functions. Uh, Mrs. Saradaki, whenever you're ready. Okay, um, <clears throat> one BUS, I'm asking the board to approve related services from Brett Denovian Associates in the amount of $10,400. Two BUS, I'm asking the board to approve submission of federal grants as follows. Uh, that's ESSER two for $377,287. Learning acceleration for twenty-five thousand and mental health for forty-five thousand. That submission is due later this week. Three BUS. I'm asking the board to renew Aetna uh, for the renewal period of July first, two thousand twenty-one through June thirtieth, two thousand twenty-two, and that as at a three percent rate decrease from last year. Uh, the adult. Delta Dental Insurance is completing the first of a two-year contract where there'll be a 0% increase. Those are the only three I believe that I'm asking. Let me just check. We have two additions to the agenda. I believe those are the only ones I'm asking for board approval this evening. Okay. So can I have a motion for those three items for Mrs. Saradaki? So moved, Boroff. Thank you, Mrs. Boroff. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any question or discussion on those items? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Uh, at our next meeting, I'll be asking for the annual approval to acquire services, purchase supplies for 2021-22 on the part of the business administrator. Five BUS, I'll be asking for the contract renewal with Power School Consultation Services at $3,600. That's a decrease of $3,000 from last year. Six BUS, I'll be asking for the contract renewal with Strauss Esme Associates for 2021-22 for the same services that we currently have in the amount of $4,785. 7 BUS, I'll be asking for renewal of the agreement uh, with Union County Ed Services uh, for um, transportation, and that's uh, still at a 4% administrative fee. 8 BUS, I'll be asking for approval of the official depositories for the 2021-22 school year. At this point, there's no change in any of them over prior, over last year. I'll say nine BUS, um, we should have the contract for the food management service for 2021-22. Um, and that's where we will, um, we anticipate returning to normal next year as far as food services. 10 BUS be asking for the approval of the athletic equipment reconditioning bid the annual bid for the reconditioning of equipment, 11 BUS. We will have the bid award for the used computers that were approved by the board to go out to sell. Um, and that's for the MacBook Airs. 12 BUS, I'll be asking for the board's acknowledgement of the receipt of fire and security drills for the month of April. 
13 BUS, I'll be asking for the board's acknowledgement of receipt and approval of the uh, April um, board secretary's report, treasurer of school funds report and budget adjustments. 14 BUS, I'll be asking for the board to acknowledge receipt of disbursement listings for the month of April. 15 BUS, I'll be asking for the board's approval of the bill list. 16 BUS, I'll be asking for the board to approve uh, power school hosting in the amount of 13,830 for power school for migration and hosting services. I'm sorry, that period should be um, June, uh, July 1st, 2021. Um, well, May, it could be May 1st. The, it's broken into two pieces, May through June and then July through June. So the total is 13,830. Um, this will exist with our current uh, hosting service for the two month period to make sure everything transitions over correctly. Um, we did a comparison. We're having some issues with our current hosting service for PowerSchool and PowerSchool has improved their hosting service. So we're moving back to the PowerSchool hosting uh, and the prices are very comparable. And then we have our Blackboard contract renewal in 17 BUS and that's for the website and content management of the website. And that's $15,890 for the year, for next year. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Farragut. Okay, then that brings us to other board business. Anybody have any liaison reports? No one has a liaison report this evening. Okay. Then we will move on. Um, I did note that PTA Council, are they not having their last meeting on May 18th, which is a Tuesday, 10 o'clock? I thought I heard something about that. I don't know offhand who is the PTA Council liaison. I think that's Deb, right? No, that's me. It's oh. May 18th at 10 a.m. Okay. That's the final meeting for the year for them. Thank you. And that includes the past president meeting. Thank you, Amy. Um, re any uh, requests to attend workshops? Seeing none. That will bring us to uh, approval of the minutes at our next meeting. There are minutes from April 22nd, executive session and the open agenda meeting. April 29th, executive session and the regular board meeting. And now it comes to the second public comment at this time. So if you'd like to make a comment, please go to spfk12.org for Zoom login information in accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public School Bylaw 0164 and 0165. The meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments with a maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business functions and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. So if you would like to make a public comment, please go to spfk12.org for Zoom login information. When it's your turn, please unmute, state your full name and the town in which you reside. Please note board members cannot respond to, re to concerns regarding individual students or staff members and such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. Um, Dr. Kulikowski, uh, our first caller is Amanda Hughes. Okay, thank you. Hi, Ms. Hughes, please unmute yourself and state your name and where you reside. Amanda Hughes, Scotch Plains. Thank you. Sure. So I know we've spoken about email responses in the past, and I just want to say I, I have emailed three to four times since our last meeting with no response. 
which is very disheartening. I know there are others also who have emailed with no response. It just does not provide a feeling of value or respect as parents. If we're asking a question, it would be so great to just receive an answer, especially if we follow up. I'm very unclear about the opening of schools. I know that we were supposed to receive on April, or by April 30th, a plan. Um, I haven't seen anything. The communication specialist who I was a part of one of the groups, I thought also was supposed to be sending something out in March, um, which felt like a long time to plan when we first heard about it, but now it's come and gone. So the communication is still an issue. We're not hearing so much, except for when someone tests positive. Um, so I saw that elementary schools are opening, which is great. Not sure about what the distancing will be for, for eating, whether it's three feet or six feet. Would love to know that. And if there is any issue with food of concern for any of the schools, can kids bring their lunch if staffing is of concern? What about middle school and high school? We need to get all the kids back. They all have different reasons for getting back, but it's important that all kids get back, not just elementary school, especially when it's been over a year now. As we've seen with so many schools in New Jersey, they're safe to open full day. Our numbers are, are doing well right now. And as we've seen with many schools in New Jersey, they're safe to open. If there's no transmission, we need to open. And there's a lot of um, discussion around it, but I'm still very unclear about the plan to open for this year and what will change for next year. Why are we sh more sure about opening next year? What's gonna change? What's the plan? What's the plan A? What's the plan B? What's the plan C? What are we doing to get our kids back? Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Hughes. Ms. Broadbent, do we have another person that wishes to make a public comment? We do. Vicki Dembiak would like to make a comment. Ms. Dembiak, please unmute yourself. Say your name and the town in which you're Vicki Dembiak, Scotch Plains. Thank you. Dr. Mast. I have read through the PowerPoint presentation that was sent out regarding the move to five full days for elementary students. The presentation cites the following three reasons for the move to full time. Students benefit from the experience of a more typical day before the end of the current school year. Students have more time in school for continued learning acceleration and increased social skills development. And teachers and administrators have the opportunity to address the challenges of operating a regular school day with COVID mitigation strategies in place. And as a result, to be better prepared for a full opening for the fall semester. I would like to applaud you and the district for making such an important decision for the younger children in our school district and for recognizing not only their academic and educational needs, but also those related to their social and emotional well being. But I also have two questions for you. First, can you please help me and other parents understand why our middle school and high school children are any less important? or any less deserving of being afforded the opportunity to address these same critical needs by opening the middle school and high schools, middle schools and high schools now for five full days as well. And second, can you please answer the question that was asked of you earlier tonight? What will be different in September that will make it possible to open middle schools and high schools then versus now? Especially since this will be our third week in yellow on the risk matrix, and we are directionally headed towards green and will most likely be there by the end of this week or next. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Dambeck. Ms. 
Ms. Dr. Clark, Kulikowski, no one else has their hand raised at this time. Okay. So, so Dr. Kulikowski, if, if I may. Oh, sure. Um, Go right ahead, Dr. May. Mr. Silvestre, can I respond to that? Yeah, so long as we're talking about just the reopening plan in general, there's no issue with the uh, ongoing lawsuit. Thank you. So, so I, I did mention, you know, earlier in the evening that, um, you know, we, we are starting with the elementary. The reason why the elementary um, is, is the most doable is really a case of proportional reason, re reasoning. They're, they're smaller, um, the schools are smaller, and, and there's more space. So when we get to the middle school, we, we, are, um, we have 800 to 900 students. We have 80% of those students attending. So creating the space with social distancing to, to eating is, is, is a bigger challenge. So one of the challenges is, as I said earlier in the meeting, you know, having the staff to serve the, the food that our food service is unable to, to um, ha have those employees available. Um, as as um, I also said in my opening comments that hopefully parents will be able to, you know, provide lunch and knowing that our, our food services will only be able to provide, you know, grab and go cold lunches. Um, I, I too have, um, you know, been looking at the predictive data all along, watching the trending in directions. We've seen the data take U-turns in negative directions, and now we are seeing the data take a U-turn in a very positive direction. I, I had referenced the article from the New York Times about exponential growth in, in the increase of COVID at certain points of this year, and now we're experiencing exponential decay, and we're watching the numbers drop very rapidly, very promising. And you know the good news for, for all of our kids is that uh, the conditions are getting better um, for the end of the year. We have a lot of end of the year activities that have happened and will be continuing to happen. Um, at the high school, it isn't a typical full day, but they have not, they, they're missing eight minutes per class. So since the high school is in a block schedule, there are four blocks a day and the classes are only eight minutes shorter than they will be next year. We just put the lunch block at the end of the day so the kids go home and have lunch. There are 10 minutes in between each block. So if kids need a snack or water, they're able to, to go outside and have that. So the high school is very close instructionally to be back to um, normal. And it has been since, since we've collapsed the cohorts and brought invited all students back. Um, the middle schools, again, uh, that, that's the piece that if we're able to, we've been going incrementally, we want to be successful with the elementary, and we're looking to see if the middle school is possible. I'm working with the, the middle school principals to, to consider that. Um, in that same opinion article in the New York Times that talked about the exponential growth and exponential decay, they also mentioned that the biggest error you can do is to open too quickly. Because we do know that there are COVID cases. It, it just takes one for it to have great contagion. And we want to make sure that we're doing it very safely so our kids do not lose out on the end of the year activities. So that's where we are, and that's what we're considering. I'm and one more thing, the, the, the communication plan, uh, our, our communication consultant did do a survey. She collected all of that data. She met with focus groups, and she's helping us put together a plan that is going to be in place moving forward. Unfortunately, she, she had a, a number of personal challenges and the, the results and the reporting out of that plan have been delayed, but it will be coming in the near future. Thank you, Dr. Mast. And Dr. Kolakowski, if I may add to what Dr. Mast was saying? Yes, go right ahead. Sure, a couple of things. I know a number of members of the public were asking about things that might change between now and September for the reason for reopening. Uh, First and foremost is the increased vaccinations of not only the staff, but the students as well. As the CDC and the FDA continue to approve on an emergency basis vaccines for uh, younger and younger children, uh, we can actually see students at the middle and high school grades uh, receive those vaccines before they come to school, which obviously makes 
um, things like social distancing, mask wearing, and issues like that a lot easier to deal with. Uh, as of right now, the CDC is still recommending uh, six feet of social distancing uh, at all grade levels when, uh, when eating, uh, which is uh, quite a um, planning issue at all school levels, but particularly the, the middle and the high school. Um, when you have a full day, the, the district will be required to serve lunch, um, not just allow kids to bring their own, but to actually serve a lunch as well. So that requires a level of planning and distancing that we're just not equipped for at the moment. Uh, and we are hoping to be by September. In fact, we are planning to be by September. Um, other things include uh, the bus schedules need to be amended and reflected. Uh, there's a level of planning for scheduling. You know, right now we try to cohort the, the, the grade levels at middle and high school so that the same group of kids stay together. Uh, that's an issue that's gonna have to be addressed for September that isn't gonna be easily addressed by the end of the school year. Um, normally kids move from class to class, they don't stay with the same kids uh, especially at the high school level, uh, they don't all take the same classes or have the same teachers. Um, that's the kind of cohorting that's happening now to keep kids together to prevent the co-mingling of groups. Um, as the virus continues to recede, which we hope it continues to recede, uh, this is another thing that we're going to have to, um, to uh, Ms. Dembiak's point of plan A and plan B is kind of the, the loosening of cohorting so that kids can get back to more normal class taking at the high school levels. These are all things that just uh, from a practical perspective can't change on a dime. And so between now and uh, as you heard a lot of the principals in speaking about the nurses, about the kind of day-to-day -day challenges of the COVID protocols, um, right now a lot of the schools are kind of trying to keep their heads above water for the day-to-day -day challenges, uh, uh, planning for September. It takes a long time of planning out uh, to make these things happen. And so that's a number of the reasons why I mean, the district's actually being proactive by, by announcing a date by which this is gonna happen rather than just kind of opening the floodgates and dealing with the problems as they occur. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silvestro. Appreciate those clarifications from both of you. Uh, Ms. Broadbent, was there another hand raised? Yes, Dr. Kolakowski, Melissa Wolf would like to make a comment. Thank you. Hi, Melissa, please unmute yourself and state the town in which you reside. Hi, yes, this is Melissa Wolf from Scotch Plains. Thank you. Um, so on the topic of the children returning five full days at the middle schools, my son is in fifth grade. Um, it's my understanding that the fifth graders don't really change classrooms, same as the elementary school students do, except for their specials. I'm not sure why they're not included in the phase back plan starting on Monday as part of the kind of trial and experiments we've been talking about at the middle school level. Um, I, I assume there would be plenty of space in the classroom to follow the same protocols that were announced in the PowerPoint slides that we got for the elementary schools. Um, you know, I think half of the class is eating their lunch for 15 minutes, and then the other half of the class will be eating their lunch for 15 minutes. Not sure why these same rules can't be applied to the fifth graders at least to get them back into school for full days. Uh, my son personally has been spending a lot of time on YouTube in the afternoon, and I think he would really benefit from being back in front of his teacher in person for a full day, even if it is for a very short period of time while we kind of walked through the end of the year. Um, I will reiterate what Amanda and Vicky said and asked for. Not really sure what we expect to be different between now and September. I understand there's probably a lot of planning that goes into place. Um, but again, we were owed a plan several weeks ago about what A, B, and C options are going to be for September. We keep talking in these meetings about what those are and we still haven't seen them on paper. And it seems like we're still just circling around various excuses, what ifs, without really putting onto paper what the solutions are. We talk about high school and middle schools not being able to eat lunches. Wherever the kids are at 11 o'clock, why can't they eat lunch in their classroom, same as the elementary schools are doing? I know they rotate, I know they have block classes. Seems like there's a lot of simple solutions that we can enact to make sure we get them all lunches. We offer them all lunches and they eat during the day at a reasonable period of time. Doesn't seem like it's so hard to figure out because all the schools in New Jersey are figuring it out now. I would just ask that you guys consider releasing the plans out to the public and the parents and addressing all of these things, you know, in a clear, concise manner as we've been asking for all along. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Wolf. Ms. Broadbent, are there any other hands raised? 
Um, yes, um, Amanda Hughes would like to make another comment. And is there anybody else being that she spoke already? Not at this time, Dr. Kolakowski. Okay. And this will be our last one. Hi, it's Amanda again. I was not planning on speaking again, but when I hear certain things being said that are not true, I, I have to. Um, I, I want to start out by saying I did notice some smiling while Melissa was speaking. It's a bit disrespectful. There was nothing positive or funny about what she was saying. Um, there was some smirking going on in the Zoom just now. Um, I want to address what Doug was saying because we can find a solution. What I teach my kids is that we don't believe in the word can't. We can find a solution and we can do it in the next few days, much less the next few months. I'm working an event this weekend with over 200 guests. Guests eat together at tables. As I had mentioned to Dr. Mast last month and months before that, when we were working together to try to get tents as well, they can pod together very easily at tables. And if someone tests positive, they can quarantine that one table. There are solutions. We are sitting on it right now. We open restaurants, we open events, we open everything except what our children need most, school. And it's unacceptable that we are acting this way. We are partying, we are going out. We are probably acting more irresponsible as adults, not, not saying we, including myself, but saying as a general whole, then the kids are who are listening, who are wearing their masks, who just want to be back at school and need to be back at school. So Doug, we can find a solution. Will we? Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Hughes. If I could just go back to Ms. Wolf's comment regarding fifth grade, certainly we know that the, the fifth grade is a school within a school in the middle school. And, and therefore, the, there, there's services that are shared um, between the grade six through eight and the fifth grade. That one, one of the big ones is uh, busing. So when we we did consider, you know, would it be would it be possible to um, to, to focus on the fifth grade? And and it was actually more complex um, be, because because of the the busing um, the busing needs. So, so having the school within the school really has the benefit of fifth graders beginning to see life as middle school um, students the following year. But in the, in the case of the pandemic, it, it has it has made it more difficult um, for for their schedules to reflect that of, let's say, the fourth graders. Um, so, so there there was also just another comment about the schools in New Jersey being open, other schools are doing it. And I, I just want to reiterate the comment because I have been looking and following those schools. I've had conversations with Amanda. She shared the list of schools that she had that are open full time. And you know, that's what we all want too. And and we've been working towards that. Like where we are in Scotch Plains is is a good place considering we have our kids back in the elementary. Um, for, for the five days, we collapsed the cohorts. Now we're moving to the full day. We know that where we end the year will we'll be part of the planning for the opening in September. And the schools that are open, for example, the one that is very close to us and is a much bigger district than us, they are open K to 12, full day. And I'm like, wow, how did they do it? And I called and I investigated. They have 30% of their students back. So they have the real estate that makes it much easier. And I think if you look at a number of the schools that are open that way, their conditions are different. So it's, it's, we, we have the blessing of having 80% of our students back. That blessing comes with just the need to make more space. And when you need to make them more space, it, it's, it's when they're eating. And yes, at the elementary level, half the students are eating at a time while the other half waits to eat. And that's how we're getting the six, the six feet social distancing. It, it becomes more difficult in the middle school and the high school because of, just because of the fact that they're, they're bigger schools with more kids in them. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Okay, Ms. Broadman, are there any other hands raised? Not at this time, Dr. Kulikowski. Okay. 
I'm going to close this portion of the meeting and move on to our upcoming scheduled meetings. Wednesday, May 26, there's a staff recognition at 3.30. Uh, location and is to be determined. Thursday, May 27th is our regular public meeting at 7.30 for exec, 8 o'clock for the public portion. Uh, again, location or streaming to be determined. And just as a reminder that the instructional update for our next board meeting on May 27th will be the recognition of the Girls Varsity Gymnastics and the Girls Varsity Volleyball along with the recognition of the PTA presidents and PTA council president for their service. Do we have any remarks for the good of the order? Mrs. Winkler? Hi, I was able to participate in some of the classes that the teachers led this week uh, for wellness um, in the in the evenings. And um, I just want to say a thank you, a shout out of thank you to our, our teachers for doing that. It was really lovely. And, um, and I really appreciated it. So that's all. Very nice. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Mrs. Mitchell. Thank you, Dr. Kulikowski. Just a reminder that the Latest edition of Caregivers Corner is in the inboxes for the K through five parents. Um, if that content speaks to you, I highly recommend it. And thank you for our student support specialist for putting it together. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell. Are there any other remarks, Dr. Mast? I had the opportunity to attend the marching band show with Mrs. Winkler, and it was it was amazing. There, the, the it was it was well supported by by the parents and the marching band fans, and it was just really great to hear our students playing on the field again. I could hear that from my yard. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mast. Any other remarks? Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Dr. Kulkowski. I just wanted to piggyback on the earlier um, when we had the nurses and highlighting them and celebrating them. As a mom who has um, kids in the school district and kids that are out of the school district, when you see the school number pop up on your phone and the nurse immediately eases you and says, it's not an emergency, there's no emergency. So I just wanna again, thank the nurses thank them for their hard work and patience because um, no names mentioned, but one of my children spent a lot of time in the nurse's office, mainly I think just to avoid a class, but um, I just want to say we appreciate them and thank you so much. And I also had the opportunity to go to a couple games on Friday, the boys baseball game. They won and they're, they're on a really good streak. So congratulations to them. And I did get a chance to see some of the girls softball team. I don't think they won, but they have some really good players. So it was exciting to see a lot of the marching band was out, lacrosse was out. So it was a good Friday. Thank you. That sounds great. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any other, Mrs. Bauer. Um, I just was going to thank the community for turning out for the food truck festival. At least the lines were really long. So I hope they made a lot of money for the seniors. And uh, I think it was a great event. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Dr. Mast. I, I would like Dr. McGarry to talk about Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> Dr. McGarry. So I, I just... Um, wanted to share what a what a wonderful experience it was to see students performing live for me for the first time since um, before the pandemic and um, to see students doing something that they're passionate about in the arts really filled my soul and the soul of lots of folks who were in in the park that day or in the in the uh, village green, I guess, as it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so kudos to um, the directors for their perseverance in um, you know, finding an outdoor location um, to, to do the show and for um, involving so many children in, in the performance. It was a great event for the community. 
Thank you, Dr. McGarry. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one, then we'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Williams. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Second, Boroff. Thank you, Mrs. Boroff. Uh, any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it's unanimous. Meeting adjourned.